Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to do a quiz game with Swift and Xcode. Now I actually did this video a while back, but many of you kept asking me how to do a sequential type of quiz game versus a random quiz game. Plus Swift has changed since that tutorial, plus I've learned some new techniques, so I'm going to implement that into this video. And also many of you were asking how to get no repeats. So I'm going to cover all that in this updated tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is open up Xcode, create a new Xcode project, and I will just call this a single view application, and the product name I'm just going to call this quiz. Language will be set to Swift and our devices will be set to Universal. Click next and create. Now that this has been created, let's go ahead and make this a bit bigger, and I'm just going to head right into the main.storyboard. Now inside of this main.storyboard, I want to add a label, so just click and drag this label. This will be the label that actually displays our question, so now I'm going to click and drag this label all the way out to the edges like so. And then I'm going to right click or control click and drag from this label over to the view. And I'm going to say center vertically and center horizontally in the container as well as saying trailing space and leading space and also top space like so. So now if we were to enter that, now our constraints for the label have been set. But the label is still over here. I want this to actually be centered. So I'm gonna go over here to the attributes inspector and center it. Now that should do it for our label. Now I'm going to make a button. So I'm going to click and drag a button onto our scene like so. I'm going to stretch it out to the edges like so and then make it a bit bigger so it's easily selectable and then I'm also going to change the background color so I'm going to go over here to my attributes inspector and just change the background color to something nice like that and you can also change the text color if you want I will do that just making it a black color like so now we can command C command V so we have four of these buttons and we can just do that like so now really all I'm doing here is just setting up constraints you don't need to do this for your application I'm sure you already have if you're working on a quiz game but either way we have this button and I'm going to set up all these constraints so I have button and I'm going to say vertical spacing vertical spacing vertical spacing and vertical spacing and now I can take this button right here I'm going to right click or control click and drag over to my view right here I'm going to say leading space trailing space and then I'm also going to say center horizontally in the container like so so now that should produce it properly and then I'm going to right click or control click and drag from the button right here and I'm going to say height like so so now we have the button having its original height so now we can do this with the other buttons like so leading space trailing space and then I'm going to say center horizontally hit enter and then we need to do height and just basically do this with all our buttons so right click or control click and drag we need leading space trailing space center horizontally click enter and then right click or control click and drag and we will put height and lastly with this last button right here leading space trailing space center horizontally not vertically and button height. Now all our constraints are set up, so now if we were to build around this, all of our buttons would be set up properly and everything would be spaced out. So now let's open up our assistant editor. So right click or control click and drag from our label over to our view controller.swift and inside of here I'm just gonna call this our queue label. So this will be our question label, connect, and then I'm also going to take this button right here. I'm going to right click or control click and drag from that button over to the view controller.swift. Our connection type will be an outlet collection. So this will be our collection of all these buttons. So the name of this, I'm just going to call this buttons like so, connect that. And then now over here inside of this, you can see that it's an array of buttons. So now I can take this and I'm going to do one, now you want to make sure you're going in descending order like this because it's adding this in an array that will be confusing if you do it any other way. So this button is essentially button 0, button 1, button 2, and button 3 with the way that they're positioned inside of this array. And now that we have our interface all set up, let's go ahead, close up our assistant editor, head over to our viewcontroller.swift, and in here I'm going to create a structure. But you want to do this right above the class right here, so we want to say struct like so and the name of this structure will be our question so this is going to be the structure of a question so we have our variable and our variable we be the question itself so we can say question colon and this will be a string exclamation point then we need another variable for our answers so i'm going to say var answers and then colon and then this will be an array of strings so do open bracket close bracket string and then outside of that add an exclamation point like so and then after that you say var answer will be equal to or colon int and then exclamation point so essentially inside of a question we're going to have the question itself a few answers so these are going to be the answers that are displayed in the buttons and then we're going to have an answer as an integer so it's going to we're going to compare that later on with what button is pressed and that will be our correct answer 
So now let's go ahead and create all these questions. So I'm going to go right in here and I'm going to create a new variable. So I'm going to say var questions this time, meaning it's going to be an array of these question structures that we created. So I'm going to say var questions will be equal to open bracket, close bracket, and inside of this you want to put question, like so. So it's going to be an array of the question structure that we created. And then open parentheses, close parentheses. Now inside of our view did load, this is where we're going to add all these questions. So we can say questions will be equal to, and then we'll do open square bracket, close square bracket, question, and then open parentheses, and you should get this automatic filling in of question, answers, and integer. So just tab that all in, and right inside of here we have our question, so I'm going to make the question just random text because I don't want to take up your time. Answers, I'm going to say open square bracket, close square bracket, and then you want to make sure that you have four objects inside of this array. So I'm going to say open quotation mark, close quotation mark, comma, and just have it, so I have four total. Inside of these answers, I'm just going to have some random text because I don't want to take up your time with a bunch of answers. And then our real answer will be equal to, we'll say two this time. So if we hit this question right here, this is going to be the correct one. Because if you remember an array, it is zero, one, two, and three, and so on and so forth. So it starts at zero. So I want this one to be the correct answer. Now let's actually add this question into our buttons. So let's go right down here. I'm going to create a new function, and this will be our random question function. So this is going to pick a random question and answer for us if we call this function. Or actually, it shouldn't call this random question because we're going to do sequential later on, so I'm actually going to call this pick question. Now inside of here, we can say if the questions dot count is greater than zero, meaning that there is something inside of this array right here, then we want to run stuff. Now first off, I'm just going to actually do the sequential questions, and then we'll get move into the random questions. So let's go up here to our view controller right here, and we're going to say var, and this will be our question number. So basically meaning, what question are we on? So this will be our Q number, and this will be equal to an integer, and then open parentheses, close parentheses. Now down here inside of this if statement right here, we can say Q number will be equal to zero. So we want this to be equal to zero all the time, and this will be a sequence of zeros because we're going to actually remove each of the questions every time we do it. And now down here we're going to say q label dot text will be equal to, and this is going to be our questions like so, open square bracket, close square bracket, and inside of this we're going to put our q number. So this will be the question that we are on, and then we're just going to grab the question from that and place that inside of our text. Now down here we're going to set up our button. So we can say for i in zero dot dot less than, and then this will be buttons dot count. So basically what this is doing, we created an i integer, and this is going to be going between zero and whatever our buttons dot count is. Now you want this less than because we count the buttons and that equals four, but that is not how arrays work. So we need to say minus one in order to actually get zero, one, two, and three, which in total is four buttons. Now inside of this, we could say open curly bracket, enter close curly bracket, and this will be buttons and then for the i integer, so for the i integer, we're going to set the title. So basically, we're grabbing each of the buttons, and then we're going to set the title equal to our questions, and then open square bracket, close square bracket, and this will be our Q number dot answers. So we're going to grab all the answers, and then we're going to put the answer inside of the button itself. And then for the state, we're going to say UI control state dot normal, like so. So basically, if this button's just sitting there, it's going to be equal to the random answer that we created. Now, right outside of this for statement right here, we're going to say questions dot remove at index, and we're going to remove at the index of our Q number. So essentially, we grab all the information from our questions that we created right here, and then we're going to take away that question as soon as everything's loaded up. That way, we don't have any more repetition. Now, right outside of this if statement right here, I'm going to say else, and then open curly bracket, enter close curly bracket, and I'm going to put an ns log in here. This will let me know that I'm done with all the questions. Now, you can put whatever you want in here, meaning you can go over to another view controller if you want, you want to send it an alert, I'm just going to put an ns log because I don't want to get into too many things. So I'm going to say ns log, like so, open parentheses, close parentheses, open quotation mark, close quotation mark, and I'm going to just put in done. Now let's go ahead and put this function inside of our view did load and see if it works. So I'm going to say pick question, open parentheses, close parentheses, just like that, and that's going to call this function. So if we were to build and run this, 
Now, as you can see, I have my label with my question loaded up and all four buttons have their correct things. And if you actually look at the code itself right here, you will see that all of these match up correspond to their corresponding button. So that worked perfectly. Now, how do we actually tell whether a question that we answer is right or wrong? Right now, nothing will happen if you click these buttons. So now let's go ahead and go over to our main.storyboard, open up our assistant editor, and we're going to right click or control click it direct from this button right here. And then we're going to create a connection and this will be an action. And this action will be our BTN one. So this is going to be our first button. Then we're going to do the same with all of these other buttons. So BTN2 action, and then our BTN3 action, and so on and so forth. Now, what do we want to happen when these buttons are pressed? So let's go ahead, go inside of our button one. Now, before we get started with these buttons, I actually need to go up here and create a new variable. So I'm going to say var, and this will be our answer number, meaning basically this answer, we're going to apply this to a number that is saved. So we're going to say it will be equal to an integer, open parentheses, close parentheses. Now what I mean by saved is basically if we go down here to our pick question, we removed it at an index. So we can't grab this answer after this is all done. So inside of here, inside of our pick question, we actually need to say our answer number will be equal to, and this is going to be equal to questions like so open square bracket close square bracket and this will be q number dot answer so we're applying this integer over to this answer number that we created so now we have this answer essentially saved so now let's go down here to our button one and we can say if our answer number is equal equal to and then we'll make this equal to zero meaning that this button on the top is pressed and this button right and this question is the correct answer as long as we apply that inside of this answer right here so if we if it's equal to zero then we want to do something so we're going to say open curly bracket enter close curly bracket and inside of here I want it just to pick another question. Now you can of course do whatever you want when they get a correct answer, but I'm going to make it pick another question. Now if they did get the question wrong, you can say else, open curly bracket, enter close curly bracket, and we can just put ns log, open parentheses, close parentheses, open quotation mark, close quotation mark, and we can say wrong. You're wrong. And you can really do whatever you want inside of this else, else statement. I'm just trying to go through this quick. Now we can basically just copy and paste all of this code into our button two our button three and our button four. But we obviously need to change if the answer number is equal to one, equal to two and equal to three, like so. Now this actually would work if you were to build and run it, but right now we only have one question and that's kind of pointless. So let's go over here and we're gonna say questions will be equal to, and then we can just go right inside of the square brackets right here. I'm going to add a comma right after the whole question that we created and then copy and paste that so that we have that a few times. Now I'm going to change the answer just to one, two and three. Now you can change all the text in here if you want, but either way, I'm just trying to show off that all of these buttons work. So if we were to build and run this, as you can see, I have the first question pops up, it's going to be zero. And then this is going to be this one right here. So that one's correct. This one right here. And then this one right here. Now, if you were to go back to your NS log, you will say, it will say done. So we are done with our questions. Now that obviously went through the sequential way. So the way this works is your question number is automatically at zero. So as soon as this, uh, this question right here is removed, this then becomes the zero. And there you have it, there is your sequence. But what if you want a random question? So we're gonna say Q number will be equal to, and we'll make this random, and then open parentheses, close parentheses, percent mark, and we're gonna say questions.count, like so. So we're counting how many questions and we're going to pick a random number accordingly. It's automatically going to pick between zero and however many questions dot count you have. So if you have five questions, it's going to be going between zero and four. But either way, let's build around this. And now as you can see, I have this question and you will have a random question down here. I don't know which one this one is, so I'm going to pick that one. This one is that one, so it's, it's a random question. And as you can see, I'm getting my NS log right here saying that I got a wrong answer for clicking some of these other ones. So yeah, there you have it. I'm actually going to go over here and just change up all of these questions right now and just give you a good idea that this works with all of them. And now as you can see, the label changes and I don't know what the question answer is, so I'm just going to click randomly. It looks like this one is the first random one. 
and then that one, then that one, and then uh, there's only one left, so this one is going to say done. So yep, there you have it. That is how to create a quiz game using sequential and random picking of your questions and no repeats. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more tutorials like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. Anyway, I will see you in the next one.